Welcome to Jikoni Magic's Meza. Today we're going to make tumbukiza, literally translated as submerge. It's quite a delicacy in Kenya, especially during those hangover days, a best cure ever. Best cut of meat to use is the one that is big, tough, and inexpensive because once it cooks, it will end up being juicy and meltingly tender. For this recipe, I used beef brisket that was 1.8 kg, huge chunk of meat as you can see. If it's too huge for you, you can cut it into half so that it can cook faster. Brisket is found in the breast area of a cow and has a lot of connective tissues, hence making it a perfect candidate for tumbukiza. I used five cloves of garlic that I left whole, ginger which I crushed lightly, three tomatoes that I divided into quarters, and at the very bottom, I had four onions that I divided into pieces, as you can see. Vegetables for tumbukiza are normally chunky because of the prolonged cooking process. They will all break down completely, nothing will be left behind. If you want, you can sieve them out of the soup, blend and return them back to the sufuria once you're done cooking, okay? I also added enough salt to taste. Here I've got with me a spice infuser. I've had it for so long and it has discolored slightly from so much use, but it still serves me well. That mark on my nail is evidence of the fact that I exercised my democratic right by voting in the August elections. Back to my spice infuser, I started by adding 3 quarter teaspoon whole black pepper, 1 teaspoon cumin seeds, half teaspoon whole white pepper, 1 star anise, and seven cardamom pods. I love using a spice infuser because it helps in perfuming the entire dish without worrying about someone biting into any of the whole spices. Another advantage is that once I'm done, I'll just empty all the contents in the dustbin and move on with life. I added enough water to cover the brisket and then covered the sufuria. Then I placed it in the oven that I had preheated at 180 degrees centigrade to bake for about 3 hours or so until the inside was super tender and falling apart. And meanwhile, I prepped the rest of the vegetables that were required for the tumbukiza. I had already peeled and halved 6 potatoes. You can leave them whole if you'd prefer but personally I find them tasting watery because the flavor never penetrates to the very center. I also had three medium-sized carrots that I divided into thirds. Back to the brisket. Two things happened while off camera. First one, I started off baking the brisket, but we had a power blackout and I had to switch to plan B, cooking it on the gas cooker. I had only baked it for about 30 minutes before the power went out. By this time, the brisket had simmered for about an hour and a half. It wasn't done yet, so I placed the vegetables around the brisket at this point. If you put them in too early, they will end up mashing completely, especially the potatoes. And now to the second thing that happened while well off camera, that I changed the sufuria lid because the brisket contracted and formed a dome that was lifting up the first sufuria lid. Hence the reason why I was now using a lid that could accommodate this change. As the tumbukiza was simmering, I prepared the cabbage. I used cut of a large cabbage and I had removed its hard core. The idea is to peel off each leaf so that they are separate before adding them to the tumbukiza. This was after about an hour more of simmering the tumbukiza. I added some of the dania leaves to it. The rest of the dania was added much, much later when I was finished with cooking the tumbukiza. I also added a handful of green hoho or capsicum. At this point, I also added more water because tumbukiza just have to have lots of soup. When adding the cabbage leaves to the tumbukiza, it's advisable that you spread them like you hold with bed sheets. This will help them cook by steaming. I covered and simmered the tumbukiza for 15 minutes for the cabbages to start softening. Uncovered. And then pushed the cabbages to the sides of the tumbukiza and into the soup because I wanted them to acquire the flavors of the tumbukiza. If left to cook on top, they will end up being very bland and watery. After this, I covered the tumbukiza to simmer for a further 15 minutes uncovered, added the remaining dania leaves, and turned off the heat. Isn't this just a sight to behold? 
My presentation of the dish is normally very simple. I serve the brisket in the center of the platter, surround it with the vegetables, and serve the soup in a separate bowl that is very deep. So now when serving it becomes easier to serve because you'll use a fork to pull off the required size of meat and scoop out some vegetables onto your bowl and then ladle up the soup on top of everything. I drizzle just a bit of the soup on the brisket and vegetables just to keep them moist before serving them up. You can serve this tumbukiza in a variety of ways. Most popular is just as it is because it's very filling. You can also accompany it with some ugali, rice, chapati, etc. Or you can make a pulled brisket salad as I'll show you in a few within this video. So just keep watching. I wanted to show you how the inside cooked to fork tenderness. See how it's pulling apart so easily? The connective tissues have all broken down. See? This will definitely melt in your mouth. Even when I went more into the center of the brisket, the results were still the same. Meltingly tender tumbukiza. Now to the salad that I talked about earlier. The pineapples are the interesting twist to this dish. I love how their sweetness interplays with the cucumber flavor. I drizzled a teaspoon of the sunflower oil into the mixture. The quantity is small because I'm the only one who will even dare to eat this combination. My husband can stand pineapples in his food. You can find out how I compromised on this on my video where I cook beef liver in gravy. Just click on that link that's appearing right now. I also pulled some of the brisket and mixed it into the salad. Next, I placed the mixture on my leftover chapati. It was about three days old, so it was not as pliable as fresh chapati. To finish it off, I drizzled yogurt and not just any yogurt. It was vanilla flavored yogurt. <laughs> I know some of you will totally dig this recipe, while others will not. The idea here is to show you that you can serve the tumbukiza as a chapati wrap or salad by using your favorite ingredients. You might be wondering why I'm not placing it seam down. Well, the chapati was three days old, as I said, and when trying to turn it over, it split. I also added more of the salad to my plate and proceeded to drizzle more yogurt over it. I'm salivating right now as I edit the video. That's how much I love this tumbukiza salad. Hope that you've enjoyed this tumbukiza recipe. Until next time, please keep it Jikoni Magic for more recipes. Kwaherini ya kuonana.